Good morning. Um, good morning to everybody. Thank you for being on time. For those of you who were on time, thank you. And thank you for the rest of you who uh, waited for a couple of minutes. I just want to welcome all those who are at the e-learning portal as well for uh, for your diligence and for ensuring that you keep uh, in tune with the course. We're at our second last week of our um, uh, of our course. Uh, next week would be our last and final lesson. Um, the uh, the assessment will be put up um, by the end of today. Uh, so kindly ensure that you complete it by the 28th of April. And uh, <clears throat> all, all the questions for your assessment will be up until today's class. It will not include what we are doing next week, but all, all um, uh, things that we've discussed up until today's lesson, today's lecture, the whole two lectures. So um, the, less, the uh, assessment will be put up. Please ensure that you... Um, completed because with that, without that, uh, you may not be able to complete your program, right? So please do ensure that you do it. You have time till the 28th. Uh, beyond that, that would also close, and we'd, we'd close in all um, uh, assessment and even uh, even being able to um, take on the course. So please ensure that you plan your time ahead and uh, uh, do so. All right. Okay. Uh, I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, we'll just start with a word of prayer and then we can get started. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your faithfulness over the last three months, even as we have looked into the subject. Father, uh, we thank you for uh, the insights you've brought in, Lord, for helping us, for giving us the wisdom uh, and the knowledge to know how to deal with those uh, who may who, who are hurting, who may need help, who may need assistance. Thank you, God, that you are our greatest counselor, Lord. Lord, the one who gives us uh, direction and uh, uh, guidance for every issue of our life. Father, even as you've entrusted us, Lord, in the midst of people, the people who we may minister to, those in our families, our friends, um, our, our church members, God, we just pray that uh, in everything, God, that, that we will continue to only speak what you would desire us to. Fill us, Lord, with wisdom and knowledge and give us the right words even as we minister. Lord, even as we look at, um, at a difficult topic today, I pray that uh, uh, you will equip us, Father, to be a blessing to others. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so the last uh, couple of weeks, we've been doing uh, particular issues in counseling, and we looked at mental health. Uh, we looked at marriage and family. Um, we we saw suicide and depression. We did see abuse. And one of the last topics that we are going to be looking at is grief and grief counseling. Um, uh, you know, this is something that uh, uh, that grief is something that all of us may have at some point of our lives experienced. We've also seen our loved ones experiencing grief. Maybe it's family, it's friends, there are members uh, in our, um, you know, with, within our own church who experience this. And this is a very uh, sensitive but extremely an important area for us to um, to know, to to know how do we minister, and especially when it comes to um, uh, you know uh, uh, comes to counseling, how do we how uh, what what do we say? How do we minister? What is it that really encourages people? Is something that uh, we hope to look at today. Okay, uh, at in your notes, um, I'm just turning to the page. We are at page um, fifty one. Um, so there are some of this that that you know we've been we tried to put into the notes, but there may be uh, a few things outside of it that um, you know it's it's just for our our understanding, our learning uh, that I may add in a couple more of things. So I mean it's it's basically just for us to keep uh, listening and uh, maybe you know uh, ask questions as as a right so before we get started i think um, maybe the first question that i probably do want to ask you 
is I'm, I'm sure that we've uh, we would, we may have gone through grief ourselves, or we have seen others experience grief. So, just just what would like to open the question out to uh, to those of to those of us who are here. Um, what uh, uh, you know when 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 you've seen someone in grief, what were what have been your personal reflections or personal thoughts? Where were you at, or, or you know what did how did you respond to someone who was experiencing grief? It's just to understand and for us to, you know, just hold each other's hand through this because sometimes you know, I remember in the, uh, you know, before um, maybe in my early, early days of, uh, uh, you know, my studies, I would avoid going to homes where someone has lost somebody because you're so lost on words that, uh, you know, you, you're more embarrassed or you're more, you're, you find it extremely difficult to face the situation. And so you feel that just by not going there, uh, you know, it, it, things may be sorted out. But then I think as years have gone by, um, um, you know, comforted people in grief, I've understood better, and, you know, even through learning and, and knowing what we are called to do as Christians definitely changes our mind. So I just would like to hear from you all as to what do you all, did you all notice or evaluate as your personal responses to someone who's undergone grief? Yeah. If you could, um, you know, discuss, it would be nice for all of us to hear. Go ahead, at least two or three of you, please, because this, this is not something new. Each of us would have faced it at some point of time. Uh, so I remember once when my mom lost her best friend. Uh, so I was I was kind of very young that time, and uh, uh, even though I was young, I was able to know that mom is going through a lot. So uh, I I I didn't even go to her for a few days. I think <laughs> I was not at all speaking with her because I don't know what to speak uh, and. Whoever comes uh, to home, they used to encourage my mom to say something. And I'll be there in a corner just looking at all those things. And and uh, I, I, it affected my mom a lot. Uh, she became uh, mentally affected. Uh, so many things were happening. So I remember once they were calling calling my mom. An invitation came for the funeral service or something after the funeral service. I was young. I was so much frustrated. I threw the invitation into the garbage and I never told my mom. So I think that's one of the things that I, that I did. Um, yeah, I just didn't want to see her like that. And I was trying my level best to make sure nothing reminds her of her best friend. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Josina. Thanks for that. Yeah, somebody else? <clears throat> somebody else? Any Anything you could, you could share, anything that you've noticed, you've seen other people, any difficulties that you've faced, or maybe you have a lot of comfort in, um, in dealing with a situation like this. Any, anything that I'd like you all to just open up so that, you know, we have, um, we have a framework even as we are going forward. Yeah, come on. Yeah, as you said, it's a very hard situation when we have to when when we are faced with something like that, especially uh, someone whom we love. They are going through a grief. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just such uh, spend time with them. Um, um, not sure like what to say, but yeah, to. Uh, just to be there uh, for them at that time, like they need that support. Uh, so just to be by their side uh, could be mm, like I I fondly remember one of my friends um, who would uh, it's it, it's not particularly in a grief situation, but whatever uh, you know um, uh, 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 difficulties uh, uh, the friends would share with her. She would just. Uh, uh, uh you know uh be so much involved in what they're speaking like she would be so attentive and uh, as if she is going through that pain 
that's how she reacts and that really mm. helps the other person to be comforted so mm. I, uh, I i was really uh, remembering my friend uh, who used to do that yeah and maybe maybe it's a, it's a it's a it's a gift i believe to uh, to do that uh, to be really involved and you know empathize and just be there for them even though you don't have any words or any answers but just be there Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. That's, that's true. Mm, uh, grief becomes a lot more bearable when you have <clears throat> people responding in an empathetic um, way, uh, you know, that someone grieves alongside with you. Yeah, so thank, thank you for that. One more person. Anybody else? Anybody else? One more person would uh, share. Okay, all right. Then we'll uh, <clears throat> we'll move forward. I just presented my screen. Okay. All right. So um, I, I think what we need to do is basically find or <clears throat> talk about, um, you know, just begin with the basics of understanding what is grief and uh, what happens and what are maybe, you know, maybe some definitions of a few few words over here you know, as we go along, you know, so that we have maybe something like a context uh, to, to, to frame up. Okay? So uh, when we're looking at grief, uh, we see that grief is a natural response to loss. Okay, now loss just doesn't have to mean death. Loss can mean many things, and we'll probably we'll look at it uh, a little later. So it's the emotional response uh, someone feels, uh, or or the response that happens when something or someone um, you really <clears throat> love and and hold really close is taken away. This pain or the loss, the pain of this loss can often be feel extremely overwhelming. So there are very many different experiences that you could have as a result of grief. There could be all kinds of difficult and unexpected emotions that come ranging from shock to anger to disbelief to guilt to profound sadness. So the, uh, we, we also see that this kind of grief, the pain of this grief, could also disrupt one's physical health, making them difficult to sleep, eat, uh, even you know concentrate, to be able to pay attention, to think straight. So these are all normal physiological responses towards grief. So these are normal reactions, <clears throat> any kind of physical reactions you'd see, emotional responses you'd see, their normal reactions to loss. And you would find that the more significant the loss, the more intense the grief will be. Okay, So coping with the loss of uh, someone uh, or, or maybe even something uh, is one of actually life's biggest challenges. So you know, in, in, the, uh, in, a, in a list of, of, uh, of stress, the death of a loved one is uh, has the highest um, uh, measure of, uh, of of stress. Okay, so often uh, grieving is generally associated with the death of a loved one, which is often generally the cause of the most intense uh, type of grief. But any kind of loss could could also cause grief. So when we're looking at grief, we we're, we're also including things like maybe it's a a grief of a breakup of a relationship or maybe a divorce. It is a loss of health or it's a loss of a job or it's a loss of a stability in finances. It could be a miscarriage. It could be a retirement, just the loss of productive years. It could be the death of a, a you know, a pet or something, you know, like, like an animal or a pet. It could be a loss of a dream that somebody cherished something that they uh, thought that they could have, but because of some instance that's happened, you know, the, the grieving happens. It could be uh, a serious illness, like a terminal uh, illness. 
It could be a loss of a friendship. It could be loss of uh, safety, personal safety, even after some kind of an entire trauma. It could also be moving away from uh, uh, homes or households, right? The selling of a home or a household could also cause that sense of grief. So even these subtle, smaller losses can actually trigger a sense of grief. Um, like, like I said, for example, someone moving away from the home uh, or, you know, move, changing jobs or moving away from a city. Anyway, whatever the loss is, <clears throat> grief is, is, is extremely personal. And um, what you would want to uh, help or, or maybe, maybe build an understanding for, it's not to bring about shame about the way someone feels or or even um, uh, for you personally, or even for others to believe that it's uh, it's not appropriate to grieve for certain things, okay? Whatever, like like we said, you know, maybe it's a grieving of a pet or a relationship or a situation. Or uh, grief comes in because they are uh, it's it's something significant has been taken away from them, and it's normal to grieve that loss one's experience. So whatever the cause of the grief, um, there are ways to ensure and work and cope with that pain. Uh, and this is what eases the maybe the sadness or the, or the hopelessness and helps the person come in terms with, with the loss and begin to find new meaning and thereafter you know, to be able to move on uh, or on with life okay so so that's just a basic understanding of uh, you know when we are looking at uh, at grief in itself so one of the terms that uh, you know that we have over here and which which maybe uh, we, we would like to also look about is the word maybe bereavement right bereavement is a type of grief that we look specifically involving the death of a loved one. So that's that's when we call it um, bereavement. But grief is generally a broader term. It is a loss in any any form. So as we said, it's it's an emotional uh, uh, response. It's an emotional uh, suffering one feels, um, and it is something that is a normal reaction. It's something that everyone goes through, and in fact, it's it's uh, healthy for people to grieve through uh, grieve through situations okay so um what are we when we're looking at grief uh, what are we basically looking for or or what what do we see now I, I, this is this is largely we're talking about when it comes to coping with death okay with bereavement but it is definitely acceptable um applicable to when you're looking at other kinds of issues or other kinds of losses as well okay so now what we are going to look at is um uh, when we're looking at a model let's say it's just just to understand you know some kind of a model of coping how do we lead somebody through a process of, of grief so there are specifically for when we say tasks it's not like we tick it all off but you know in general we have in our minds that uh, you know the person is moving from this stage to another stage to the next stage so there are basically these four um, stages or, or tasks that someone would help so, uh, uh, create that place for coping with the death of a loved one so uh, the the four uh, the first and foremost is to come to a place of accepting and uh, coming to a place of a reality that the person that they've lost is no more that uh, that the uh, the death of the individual is uh, a reality is something that is in front of their eyes that is something that they uh, to come to that place of acceptance okay the next one is through to also work through that pain of grief to be able to process that pain the um uh, the the lacunae that they feel as a result of that grief um the the many things that they feel they have lost as a result of it okay the next one is to adjust to the life without the person without the without the one who they've lost to move on to keep living 
to keep hope, to uh, begin to see how they can reorder, uh, refunction their lives without the disease person. And the last is to, uh, you know, to be able to maintain a healthy connection uh, to the memory of the deceased while moving on with life. Now it is, it's to be able to think over, uh, you know, yes, maybe, maybe at points of time experience that sense of loss and sadness, but being able to move on. So to build that healthy connection um, with with the memory of the, of the of the person who they've lost. Okay. Uh, so moving on, I think something that uh, we need to understand is that grief is uh, grief can affect everyone very very differently. So it is it you may you may see or you may have noticed how different people uh, cope very differently, right? For 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 some. Uh, they take um, you know, good amount periods of time to really talk about the one who they've lost, uh, revisit these experiences of the other person, uh, continue, you know, really sharing about the other uh, the, the person they've lost or, or whatever the situation is. But whereas others may not bring it up at all, they may have a very personal, private time of grieving and not something that's more. Uh, more publicly shown, right? So it's it is it's basically um, uh, it it it's very unique the way that everyone uh, grieves and each is different. Now the it, this could also be based on the way that they react could also be based on the kind of relationship they had with the person who they have lost. Okay. And uh, so the, the connections of how it is, the, so the closer it may be, the grief may be harder, uh, the, the coping also may be very different. So because each person is different and every relationship is different, even the way that uh, grief is dealt with could also be very, very different in itself. Okay. <clears throat> uh, now to, to just, to just uh, probably understand a little bit to to really uh, you know have an idea about what is it that we see as normal or or what do we what do we call as the signs and the symptoms um, of grieving okay and uh, so so even as we're taking through this uh, this is to build our awareness that uh, that a lot of these responses that we see are uh, are in itself quite normal. Okay, it, it's something that uh, that is that is that is commonly seen among those who may be uh, who those who may be grieving. Okay, so let's just go through this list uh, um, so that you know we have have an idea. So the first one that you probably um, see is something like shock and numbness, and especially if uh, the loss has been very sudden. It's been traumatic. There's been uh, it's it's unexpected. There can be extreme shock and numbness, um, you, know, you know, a sense of not being in in reality, as if it's a dream. Uh, the, the the general disbelief of it, the the fact that you know there, there is so much of confusion because um, uh, you know not being able to come to the realistic picture of uh, you, you may have heard people saying you know just yesterday or just this morning. This is what happened, and now uh, there isn't uh, anyone, or this person isn't there. So this could lead to extremely, very uh, unexplainable, strange, um, painful thoughts and, and feelings, um, and even even the articulation of some of these thoughts could could seem very uh, disconnected, uh, right? There'll be one certain points of time that is. There is shock. Then there can be there, there could be brief periods of normalcy, and there can be uh, brief, sudden periods of uh, uh, disbelief, where uh, you know you, you can actually see the confusion being coming up. So, so this is these are especially in the initial hours to probably days. This is probably something that that is quite common. Okay, and uh, the the common questions of why. 
why did this happen? Uh, you know, how could this happen? Um, uh, you know, attempting to find answers to 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 why the loss actually took place. So the questions are are quite clear. The emotional part of it is uh, what seems more stronger, where you would have multiple um, mixed kinds of emotions. There could be sadness, anger, guilt loneliness, bitterness, fear, a sense of a huge anxiety, uh, nervousness, um, being short-tempered, uh, just feeling uh, a sense of underconfidence to carrying things forward, right? Um, or there could even be a, a points of blaming. Um, but in, in order to find some sense of a closure, there could be, you know, it's because of this, 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 that this happened. It's because these things took place is why this happened. So there could be a lot of those associations, a lot of blaming that can happen. Uh, they, sometimes you could, you know, depending on how the person passed away, they could also kind of suddenly experience the same problems as the person who has died, that sense of a feeling that, you know, even something drastic like that could happen to oneself. And also difficulty in being able to function uh, uh, normally, which means the sleep is being disturbed, um, uh, um, um, appetite gets dis disturbed, uh, then... Uh, um, uh, even work functioning all gets disturbed. So, so this is this is what you would see as some of the signs uh, and symptoms. Okay. Now, before I I move on to um, to part of the uh, you know certain emotional responses, I, I just I think I just would like to highlight on on some couple of uh, things about the process of grieving. So, as I said, you know, grieving is a very um, it's an individual experience and often there isn't a right <clears throat> or a wrong way to grieve. It all depends on certain factors, including one's personality, their coping style, um, their life experience, the faith that they have, um, and how significant the loss was. So inevitably, what we do understand is that a, a grieving process definitely takes time. Healing happens gradually. It, it's something you do not force. Uh, something you do not hurry, uh, and uh, and when when you look at it, there isn't a there isn't a timetable for grieving. So some people begin to feel better within some weeks or months. For others, it may take a longer period of time. Whatever the grief experience, it's important to show patience and also allow that process to unfold. Now, <clears throat> before we go, <clears throat> excuse me. So before we go ahead, I just would like to just discuss a couple of myths that may be there, uh, you know, with grief and grieving. One is, um, you know, the myth that the pain will go away faster if you just ignore it. So I think we understand and, and through these counseling sessions, we, um, you know, this course, we've understood that just attempting to ignore some emotional response or keep, keeping it from coming up forward only makes it makes matters really difficult and makes it really worse for over a long time. So in order for real healing to take place, it is necessary for people to face their grief and come to a place of actively dealing with, with that grief. Okay. Uh, another myth that we often see is that, uh, um, and this is what you will hear very often in funeral uh, services, you know, you go up to people and say, be strong. You know, it's important to be strong uh, for your children, be strong for others. Now, feeling, uh, so I, I think we need to be able to delineate, delineate this, that feeling sad or scared or lonely is definitely a norm. It's a normal reaction to a certain loss. And crying or <clears throat> showing one's grief does not mean a person is weak. Okay, uh, and 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 something that we encourage is that you you just you don't need to protect others by putting on a brave front. Actually, showing the feelings which are really within not just helps you, but it also helps others to you know, especially let's say if it is a family, and it, it helps others also to grieve. 
help others also to see that it's normal to grieve, um, that uh, you know it is a process of grieving. So to to be strong is something that uh, you know you 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 be careful not to put that across because it, it may tend to show that if they are grieved, if they're crying, that means they're weak. Okay, but so there's no there's absolutely no need to protect anyone and being able to show that uh, sense of uh, uh, sadness. The next is um, the myth that you say is if you if you don't cry, it means you aren't sorry about the loss. All right. So uh, you know if, if there isn't someone crying, then okay, maybe uh, they, they're, they're fine with that, right? But again, just as any other emotional response, crying is also a normal response to sadness. But that's not the only way that one expresses sadness. So those who don't cry uh, may, can feel the pain just as deeply as others. They may just not express it that way. They may express it in other ways, right? So that shouldn't be like an evidence of the fact that they are sorry or they're not sorry, OK? So then the, the next thing is about grieving that, uh, you know, so, so there are often things that are said about what is the time frame for grieving. So generally, there isn't a specific time frame for grieving. And uh, it, it generally differs from person to person. But there is there is another part that I will discuss maybe later on uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the class about pathological grief. The next one is um, the myth about moving on with somebody's uh, with, with the person with your life means that you've forgotten about your loss. So moving on only means you've accepted your loss. But that's not the same as forgetting. Okay, so moving is accepting and not about forgetting. You know, one can move on with their life and keep the memory of that thing that they've lost as an important or integral integral part of them. In fact, as as a person moves through life, these memories can become more and more integral in defining, uh, you know, their their world and their understanding of of things. So. It's it's important to ensure um, you know that, that we have different mindsets as we as we help or as we as we understand this part of grief. Okay, um, so let's move on. Um, okay, so I, I'd like to take you all through uh, what we call as uh, um, uh, as we understand as certain stages of grief okay and this is important to understand because it it gives us an idea about um about what's uh, what people generally go through even as uh, uh, they go through a sense of uh, a sense of grief or a sense of loss that that actually happens okay uh, now this person by name uh, kubler ross um, is the one who brought about these this the uh, stage. So uh, um, her name was, uh, she was a psychiatrist. Her name was Elizabeth Kubler Ross. And this, what she introduced became the stages of grief or the five stages of grief. Now, these stages of grief were basically based on her studies of the feelings of um, the people who faced terminal loss. Um, but but many have generalized them to even other types of, uh, you know, life life changes, life events, life losses, um, such as the death of a loved one or even a breakup. So, uh, uh, but nevertheless, you know, uh, you, you would see that it's um, it's pretty consistent in in how um, a anyone would probably deal with, uh, with this loss. So, um, uh, okay, yeah, so let, let's just look at each of them and, uh, you know, we just, just probably gain and understanding. So the first place is what we what we look at is denial. So denial is the it's that stage that can uh, initially help someone survive the loss. Okay. So you might think that uh, in, 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 especially when someone is is in a place of denial, uh, they they are not able to make sense of the life around them. That means you know life has has no meaning. Uh, it, it becomes to be too overwhelming. Uh, sometimes the denial is even denying the news 
and uh, you know, that sense of numbness that is there, that sense of shock that is there. So it's common in this stage to wonder how life will go on in this different state. Okay, because a person is in a state of shock, uh, li uh, because suddenly life has changed from the way they once knew. Once they knew it, uh, they knew it the way that they knew it. Okay, and uh, uh, something has occurred. It's changed in an instant. Okay, like for example, if a person was diagnosed with with some kind of an illness, um, they might believe that the news is incorrect, or you know, there must have been a mistake that's occurred somewhere in maybe in the tests or things like that, or they you know mixed up some uh, blood reports or, or something like that. Or if if one receives the death uh, news of the death of a loved one, um, you the person may cling on to the hope that you know it, it must have some it, it may not be true all right it, it's probably the wrong person that they're talking about so in this stage they, uh, they are not living in actual actual reality the person who's going through that sense is not living in actual reality rather they're living in a preferable reality something that they wish that they had happened interestingly you know it is uh, this denial and shock that actually helps people to cope and survive that grief event, right? This place of being in shock and in denial uh, gets them through those initial stages of that that event. So denial aids um, in in facing the person's feelings of grief. Instead of becoming completely overwhelmed with grief, they deny it. They do not accept it, and uh, you know the the full impact of it becomes um, staggered uh, one at a time. So you know, think of it as as maybe the 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 way that God's made our defense mechanism, the body's natural defense mechanism. You know, it's almost saying like you know, it's only this much you can handle at once. So once the denial and shock starts to fade then the healing process begins. So at this point, these feelings that um, that were being suppressed then begins to surface. So in denial, you will see avoidance, you will see confusion, you will see shock, you will see elation. You may see very many different things, OK? Next comes the phase of anger. Once, um, uh, once the person grieving, the grieving person lives in actual reality again and not in that preferable reality, anger begins to set in. Now, this is a common stage uh, where, where people begin to think, why me? Uh, life is not fair. Um, this is a place where they, they may begin to, uh, might look to blame others for the cause of the grief that they are, that they are experiencing. Uh, the cause of the grief that they are experiencing. So it's it's also again um, uh, the place that there are there are extremely um, you find that there are, there are huge questions that come about. Okay, um, they begin to feel that everything is incomprehensible of how something like this could could happen. Uh, for those who may be strong in the faith, they may begin to start to question their belief in God, you know, or, or the existence of God. Where is God? Why didn't God do this? I mean, I was standing on this and why why didn't all of that? So th this is that place where you would see um, this kind of emotions that come up. So um, uh, the, the uh, you know, the, the science or research has shown that this anger is a necessary stage of grief. And in fact, um, uh, you should be encouraging the anger. Now, when I mean by encouraging the anger, it's to help them feel the anger rather than uh, not when you say encouraging, it's okay, don't be angry, continue being angry. That's not the meaning of that encouragement. It's it's important to for them to feel and experience um, that anger. So it's it's um, yeah, because it's thought that even though one one might seem like they are in that cycle of anger. In time, it will go down. It will dissipate. And the more you know, someone is in that place of anger, the more quickly it will dissipate, and the more quickly it will heal. So it is not, and and, and that's why you know we understand that it may not be healthy to suppress those feelings of anger because it's a natural response and it's a necessary one. So. Um, uh, 
now now why is this this confusion there because in our everyday life we are we are normally told to control our anger towards any situation or towards others so when we but when we experience a grief event um when you're feeling disconnected from reality you have absolutely no grounding anymore so the, uh, you know person's life has shattered and there's nothing solid to hold on to so often you think of anger as a strength to bind you to reality so it's the person may feel deserted may feel abandoned during a grief moment that nobody's there that they're alone and the direction of anger towards something or somebody is what might actually bridge them back to reality and connect them to people again so it's something to grasp onto and it's it's a natural step in healing so anger being the next one is a natural step in healing the third one that we see is bargaining now when something bad happens you know think of um, uh, you know uh, you, you would have probably talked about or thought about um, you know or, or you must have found that you you're making a deal with god you're saying please god if you do this then i will do this right if you bring this back then i will do this right that that place where there is a huge uh, place of loss there is a sense of bargaining uh, it, it's 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 that stage it's it, in a way this stage is called the false hope that falsely you're making yourself believe that you can avoid the grief through some type of negotiation that you know if you change this then i'll change that so it's almost be uh, have it's it's a desperation to get um the life back to how it was before the event of grief that the, that the person may be even willing to make some kind of a major life change in an attempt to bring about that normality okay so guilt is a very common uh, uh, you know common extension of that bargaining this is this is when one endures the endless you know what if that you know they keep asking themselves the what if statements what if i had left the house 5 minutes before um what if uh, you know i had i had gone instead of the person what if i had encouraged them to go to the doctor before all the what ifs uh, come about okay so that's that place of bargaining the next stage that we look into is depression depression is generally and often a commonly accepted form of grief that this is probably one place that people look and say okay you know i'm sure they're feeling sad because someone's lost and and you can know, many people associate depression immediately with with grief as it is a you know it's a very present emotion and and what does this uh, represent it represents the emptiness one feels um when they're living in reality and realize the situation or the person is gone forever and in this stage one may withdraw from life they may feel numb they may feel like as if they're living in a big fog and really not want to do anything just stay withdrawn maybe in bed the world may seem too much and very overwhelming for the person to face now they may refuse to go out don't want to be around with others don't feel like talking experience that feelings of hopelessness or even sometimes can experience suicidal thoughts thinking you know what's the point uh, of of all of this going on okay so that's the place of depression then comes the last stage of grief that uh, that she identified is acceptance now this acceptance is not in the sense that it's okay right uh, um but rather it is this person has passed away but i i am going to be okay right it's not that it's okay that someone has passed away no it isn't okay but it's more someone has passed away but i will be okay this is where the place where emotions begin to stabilize you come back or re-enter reality you come to terms with the fact that the new reality is that whatever you've lost is not coming back or that um, or maybe it is that you know there is this kind of an illness that's there and that's something that they need to live with or a reality that okay, they have certain months to live and that's all that there is and they they begin to experience feeling okay with it so it's not a good thing but it's something that they have coped and learned to live with so it's definitely a time where the person adjusts 
and readjustment takes place. There could be good days, there can be bad days, and then they, you know, there can be good days again. But in this stage, it does not mean that uh, that the person may not never have a bad day or they may not feel uh, depressed again. But um, but 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 they 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 outnumber the good days often outnumber the bad days. And in this stage, uh, a person may feel uh, may lift from that that place of heaviness or that place of darkness or cloud cloudiness that they feel uh, and they begin to start engaging with life again begin to start engaging with friends with things that uh, that are more real to them they may build new relationships they begin to understand uh, that they need to grow and that they that they need to move on now that's that's the place that they are in as they move to the space now even as you see these uh, these five stages or these five phases um, what what you need to remember is it, these are not um, they're not uh, what do you say not watertight compartments it's not that they will go one by one and then you know they're done so it can move up and down this way that way um, till a point of time that you will begin to see that there is a lot more acceptance okay so even kubler ross when she bought this out she never intended that these stages were to be a rigid framework that applies to those you know uh, who who actually uh, are are grieving um they were not meant to be tucked away they they generally you see responses that many people have but they may not be a typical response um but you know generally uh, uh, you, you would you would definitely see this kind of a uh, of a state. So, looking at the five stages of grief, uh, generally, if you you know if you want to clearly remember it, in the denial phase, the active um, response is you know this can't be happening to me. This is unreal. The phase of anger is why is this happening? Uh, you know who is to blame for this? The phase of bargaining is you know. Uh, let this i will do this if you can do this or make this not happen and in return i will do this in depression is i'm too sad to do anything and in acceptance is i'm at peace with what has happened okay so these are the five stages of grief people do go through this there there is this 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 place where um it it can be a roller coaster some sometimes um instead of a, these series of stage stages this grieving process can be like a roller coaster full of ups and downs um and, and you know the the it, it becomes rougher at some points of time it becomes better but the difficult periods tends to become less intense shorter in time as time goes by uh, but it takes time to work through a loss so so even as we're looking at grieving, let's not look at it as, you know, it should follow this process, but let's have a broader guide, guideline about how that happens. Okay. Um, all right. I'd like to stop here for a one minute of questions. If not, we'll just take a 10 minute break and we can come back. Any questions here? All right. Okay. We'll take a break and we'll come back in 10 minutes. It's 10.51 on my clock. We'll be back by 11 noon.